What images come to mind when someone mentions the queen of country music? For most, it's big red hair and an unmistakable Oklahoma twang. It's a woman who, in her 60th decade, has yet to slow down, Reba McIntyre. However, behind the glitz and glamour, Reba's life has been a mix of triumphs and trials. Despite facing numerous challenges in both her career and personal life, Reba has always managed to overcome adversity. But how did she do it? Which of her romantic relationships tested her resilience the most? Join us as we delve into Reba McIntyre's journey to fame and the roller coaster of love and heartbreak she's experienced along the way. Early Life and Musical Background Reba McIntyre's story is one of humble beginnings, unwavering determination, and an insatiable pursuit of excellence. She was born in McAllister, Oklahoma in 1955, as the third of four children to Clark and Jacqueline McIntyre. Reba's formative years were shaped by the core values of hard work and resilience instilled by her ranching family. Rodeo was deeply ingrained in the McIntyre lineage, with both her grandfather, John Wesley McIntyre, and her father, Clark McIntyre, achieving notable success in the sport. It was clear that greatness was in their blood. Although Reba's mother, Jacqueline, also harbored dreams of a music career, she chose to pursue a path in education. Despite this, her love and support were nurturing, though Reba often yearned for her father's affection, as she candidly revealed in her book. Growing up on a cattle ranch meant that the McIntyre family shared daily responsibilities, fostering a strong sense of unity and a robust work ethic. Amidst the ranch life, Reba and her siblings discovered a shared passion for music, nurtured by their mother, who taught them to sing in harmony while accompanying their father to rodeo events. Reba embarked on her musical journey from a young age, showcasing her talents at school events and earning recognition for her singing prowess. Alongside her musical pursuits, she also displayed remarkable athletic abilities, thriving in basketball and track, all while refining her skills in piano and guitar. Her dreams stretched beyond music. She aspired to follow in her father's footsteps as a barrel racer, embodying her determination to uphold the family tradition. As high school approached, Reba and her siblings joined forces to form the Singing McIntyres, releasing a record dedicated to their grandfather. Over time, the group evolved into the Kaura High School Cowboy Band, captivating audiences at local venues and leaving an indelible mark on the regional music scene. Despite the natural course of life leading to the band's dissolution after her brother's graduation in 1973, Reba's passion for music remained steadfast. Journey to Stardom When Reba enrolled at Southeastern Oklahoma State University after graduating from high school, she had no idea that her path would lead her to stardom, captivating hearts and transcending the boundaries of country music. With a major in elementary education and a minor in music, she juggled her academic pursuits with helping out at the family ranch, demonstrating a work ethic that would later define her career. As she completed her student teaching and earned her bachelor's degree, her unwavering dedication to both education and family became apparent. In 1974, a pivotal moment arose when Reba's father convinced her to sing The Star Spangled Banner at the Oklahoma City National Finals Rodeo. Little did she realize that this performance would lead to a life-changing encounter. Her angelic voice echoed throughout the arena, capturing the attention of none other than country singer Red Stegall, who was profoundly moved by her performance. This resulted in an invitation for Reba, her siblings, and her mother to attend a hotel party with Red Stegall, where Reba's a cappella rendition of Dolly Parton's Joshua left everyone in awe. Jacqueline McIntyre, Reba's mother, seized the opportunity and approached Red Stegall about helping her children secure recording contracts. Although he couldn't take all three, he recognized something unique in Reba and offered his support for her singing career. And so, with these serendipitous encounters, Reba McIntyre's journey to stardom began. The trip to Nashville, Tennessee in March 1975 marked a turning point in Reba's life. 
Despite initial doubts and concerns about pursuing a professional country music career, she found unwavering support and encouragement from her mother. Jacqueline's words of love and wisdom deeply resonated with Reba, propelling her forward on a path that would reshape the landscape of country music. Reba McIntyre's Triumphs and Trials in Music Reba McIntyre's musical odyssey has been truly remarkable, filled with moments of fate, purpose, and chance encounters. It all began when a cassette recording of her caught the ear of Glenn Keener, an executive at Polygram Mercury Records. Recognizing her exceptional talent, Keener made the crucial decision to offer her a contract in Nashville, altering the trajectory of her life forever. At a crossroads, he carefully compared her tape with another recording by a fellow female singer, ultimately placing emphasis on Reba's undeniable abilities. In November 1975, Reba McIntyre signed her inaugural country music recording contract with Polygram Mercury Records, marking a significant milestone in her quest to share her musical gifts with the world. This paved the way for her first recording sessions for the label in January 1976, guided by Glenn Keener. While her debut single, I Don't Want to Be a One-Night Stand, entered the charts in 1976, it didn't quite achieve the level of success she had envisioned. Despite initial setbacks, the release of her eponymous debut album in 1977 introduced Reba to audiences as a promising new country artist. As Reba immersed herself in live performances and tours, she often found herself without a dedicated band, relying instead on house bands in unfamiliar musical settings. Despite these challenges, her resilience and humor shone through, captivating audiences with her talent and wit. In 1978, a collaboration with fellow country artist Jackie Ward led to her first Top 20 country chart hit. Following changes in the Polygram Mercury Records roster, Reba transitioned to working with producer Jerry Kennedy. In 1979, she released her second studio album, titled Out of a Dream. The album featured a cover of Patsy Cline's classic Sweet Dreams, which became her first top 20 hit as a solo artist. Throughout the late 1970s, the artist who would later be crowned the Queen of Country dedicated countless hours to the recording studio releasing singles and honing her craft. While her early songs didn't achieve widespread success on the charts, she was on the brink of a breakthrough. In 1980, You Lift Me Up to Heaven soared into the top ten of Billboard's hot country songs, propelling her into the spotlight and setting the stage for her remarkable career. During the 1980s, McIntyre remained true to her roots embracing the lively persona of a rodeo girl in her photos and performances. As her distinctive vocal style evolved, so did her image, transitioning from rugged and rural to refined and mainstream. Nashville was predominantly a male-dominated industry when McIntyre launched her career in the 70s and 80s. Reflecting on how she navigated this landscape, McIntyre remarked, As a woman, you don't complain. You work twice as hard and get the job done. You strive to outsmart and outwork others, aiming to be ahead of the curve. You lend a hand, step up, and lead the way. That's the lesson I learned from working on the ranch, and it served me well in the music industry. In 1986, Reba McIntyre experienced a breakthrough year. Her ninth studio album, Whoever's in New England, not only marked a milestone by earning her first Grammy Award, but also secured her the title of Best Female Country Vocal Performance for its title track. The momentum of her success remained strong as McIntyre consistently produced hit after hit throughout her career, with many albums selling millions of copies. In 1990, she released Rumor Has It, which went on to sell 3 million copies and achieved triple platinum status by 1999. Throughout the past two decades, Reba McIntyre has maintained her position as the reigning queen of country, collaborating with fellow country music stars such as Kenny Chesney, Trisha Yearwood, and Leanne Rimes. In 2003, McIntyre released the album Room to Breathe, followed by Reba Duets in 2007. Both albums achieved platinum status, 
with Reba Duets debuting at number one on the Billboard 200 chart. The streak of success continued with her chart-topping album Keep On Loving You in 2009. During the same year, McIntyre set a new record at the Country Music Association Awards, surpassing Dolly Parton as the most nominated female solo artist in the award's 43-year history. With a total of 52 nominations, she currently holds the second position, trailing behind Miranda Lambert's 63 nominations. In March 2011, the Country Music Association made a significant announcement, revealing its plan to induct Reba McIntyre, then almost 56 years old, into its Hall of Fame. However, on the very day of this announcement, McIntyre found herself back in Oklahoma, where her father had been hospitalized after suffering a severe stroke that left him in a coma. Despite the challenging circumstances, McIntyre expressed her gratitude and excitement, stating, This is a huge honor for me, and something I've dreamed about since I was a little girl. She reminisced about her childhood trips to Nashville, where she would visit the Country Music Hall of Fame, and reflected on the fulfillment of her lifelong dream. Her most recent musical endeavor, Not That Fancy, was released in early October 2023. Acting Career Expanding her repertoire, the singer seamlessly transitioned from music to movies during the peak of her fame. Embracing this new facet of her career, she took on various roles, including appearances in the 1990 film Tremors and as a race car driver in The Little Rascals, 1994, alongside starring roles in numerous made-for-television movies. In 2001, the WB Network introduced a sitcom titled Reba, featuring the country music star as a divorced mother navigating the challenges of raising a teenage daughter. The show enjoyed six successful seasons and earned McIntyre a Golden Globe nomination for her performance. Concurrently, in a remarkable theatrical feat, McIntyre portrayed Annie Oakley in a Broadway revival of Annie Get Your Gun. Following the conclusion of Reba, the multi-talented artist lent her voice to the character Betsy the Cow in the 2006 remake of Charlotte's Web, which boasted a star-studded cast, including Dakota Fanning, Julia Roberts, and Dominic Scott K. McIntyre returned to television with another sitcom, Malibu Country, premiering on ABC in November 2012. Despite its promising start, the series concluded after just 18 episodes. In 2022, she demonstrated her impressive acting chops by joining the cast of the ABC series Big Sky, portraying the character Sonny Barnes. Additionally, she made a guest appearance on the spin-off of The Big Bang Theory, titled Young Sheldon. Then, in 2023, she graced the screen in the Lifetime movie The Hammer, which also starred her former Reba co-star Melissa Peterman, coach on The Voice. In 2023, McIntyre joined the NBC singing competition The Voice as a celebrity judge and coach, alongside Gwen Stefani, Niall Horan, and John Legend. Previously, she had appeared on the show as an advisor and a mega mentor before stepping into the expanded role to replace Blake Shelton. Speaking to people in May, she expressed her excitement about working with John and Niall, describing them as funny and clever individuals with insightful comments. She acknowledged that she had her work cut out for her, but was eager to get started. McIntyre mentioned receiving lots of support and advice, expressing confidence in her ability to handle the role. Season 24 episodes began airing in September. Net worth. As of December 2023, McIntyre's total net worth is estimated to be around $95 million, according to Celebrity Net Worth. Heartbreaks and Griefs Despite her remarkable success and numerous accolades, Reba McIntyre's life has been marked by both joy and pain, with her journey through heartbreak adding layers of depth to her incredible story. One of the most devastating moments in McIntyre's life occurred in 1990 when she faced an unimaginable tragedy. Eight of her bandmates tragically lost their lives in an aircraft disaster, leaving McIntyre and her loved ones grappling with profound loss. 
The tragedy unfolded during a period when McIntyre's touring schedule had become increasingly demanding. To minimize long bus trips, she and her band had begun traveling to concerts by private planes. The year 1991 began with a series of tour dates in Alaska, Saginaw, Michigan, Fort Wayne, Indiana, and a private performance for IBM in San Diego, California. Two planes were scheduled to depart from San Diego, carrying Reba McIntyre's band members. McIntyre, along with her husband and stylist, was set to travel on a different aircraft the following day. However, in the early hours of March 16, 1991, McIntyre received a devastating phone call from Roger Woolsey, the pilot of the second plane. The call brought the heartbreaking news that one of the planes had crashed. Tragically, it had collided with the side of Otai Mountain in San Diego, claiming the lives of everyone on board. The loss of her tour manager and seven band members shook McIntyre to her core, plunging her and her family into a period of profound grief and mourning. During this dark and tumultuous time, Reba turned to her faith as a source of solace and strength. Drawing on her Christian beliefs, she found comfort and resilience in the face of overwhelming sorrow. Her unwavering faith in God and the power of prayer became guiding lights that helped her navigate through the darkest days of her life. Even amidst tremendous loss, her religious convictions provided her with the resilience to endure and eventually find hope again. Divorce The end of Reba McIntyre's first marriage marked a sad chapter in her personal story. Back in 1976, she tied the knot with Charlie Battles, a rodeo steer wrestler, and their marriage endured for over a decade. Yet, as life often unfolds, their paths eventually diverged, leading to the painful decision to part ways and ultimately divorce in 1987. Ending a marriage is emotionally taxing for anyone, and McIntyre was no exception. She grappled with the heartache of closing such a significant chapter in her life, navigating the intricate process of disentangling two lives that had been intertwined for years. After her divorce from Charlie Battles, McIntyre eventually found love again and remarried her manager, Narvel Blackstock, in 1989. Their son, Shelby, came into the world in 1990, and together, Reba McIntyre and Narvel Blackstock forged a life that seemed straight out of a fairy tale, a love story that weathered the storms of the entertainment industry. However, life has a way of throwing unexpected curveballs, and in 2015, McIntyre and Blackstock announced their decision to part ways, bringing an end to their long and seemingly blissful marriage. The pain of losing a partner resurfaced as McIntyre grappled with the dissolution of a significant and very public union. Yet amidst the turmoil, Reba McIntyre's journey is not solely one of heartbreak. It's a testament to resilience, faith, and the indomitable strength of the human spirit to overcome adversity. She found love again with Rex Lynn. In October 2020, Reba disclosed that she was dating Rex after over two decades of friendship. It's nice to have someone to chat with, share laughs, and delve into discussions about what's happening. She mentioned about her relationship with the actor on an episode of her podcast, Living and Learning. We talk about our past, our families, share funny stories, discuss his acting career, my own journey as an actress. Plus, he's really into my music, and I'm equally interested in his career. Reba McIntyre crossed paths with her partner, Rex Lynn, decades ago, but it wasn't until 2020 that they began dating. During an episode of Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, the country star reminisced about meeting the CSI, Mia Mai, actor in 1991 while filming The Gambler Returns, The Luck of the Draw Together. We've stayed in touch over the years, McIntyre shared. Then we started texting and talking on the phone, getting to know each other better during the quarantine. Their relationship made its debut on Instagram when Lynn posted a photo with McIntyre in January 2020. Captioned, had a fantastic dinner with this Oklahoma girl, tater tots and ketchup included. Confirming their relationship in October of that year on her podcast Living and Learning, 
McIntyre mentioned that they connect through their similar careers in the spotlight. We talk about our past, our families, share funny stories, discuss his acting career, my own journey as an actress. Plus, he's really into my music and I'm equally interested in his career, she explained. Whether or not they'll tie the knot is still uncertain, considering McIntyre's past heartaches. If it's a whim and he says, I want to get married, yeah, that's fine. If I want to get married, I'm sure he'd say, that's fine. But we get along so well right now, why rock the boat? She shared with E! News, Legacy of Honors. Throughout her remarkable career, Reba McIntyre has firmly established herself as a shining star in the realm of country music, earning a plethora of accolades that attest to her lasting influence on the industry. With a career adorned with numerous milestones, McIntyre has captured the hearts of fans and insiders alike, leaving an unmistakable imprint on the genre. Among McIntyre's most noteworthy achievements is her impressive array of honors, a testament to her exceptional talent and enduring legacy. Garnering seven wins for the Academy of Country Music's Top Female Vocalist Awards, she stands as a paragon of excellence in country music. These accolades not only acknowledge her ongoing brilliance, but also highlight the steadfast support of her devoted fan base. Furthermore, McIntyre has made an indelible mark at the American Music Awards, securing an impressive 12 awards for favorite country female artist. Reba McIntyre's influence spans across generations, evident in her extensive list of achievements that solidify her status as a legendary female country vocalist. Her historic feat of winning the Country Music Association's Female Vocalist of the Year Award four times consecutively remains unmatched in the history of country music. While other esteemed singers have claimed multiple wins in this category, none have been able to replicate McIntyre's extraordinary accomplishment. This enduring influence was highlighted in 2016 when Carrie Underwood joined this exclusive club, a testament to McIntyre's lasting legacy. Her wins in 1987, 1994, and 2018 demonstrate the depth and breadth of her artistic achievements, earning her recognition from the music industry's most prestigious awards. In December 2018, McIntyre received the prestigious Kennedy Center Honor, recognizing her exceptional contributions to American culture and the performing arts. This accolade serves as a fitting tribute to her enduring impact on music and entertainment cementing her status as a true luminary in the industry. Among her remarkable career milestones, McIntyre's induction into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2011 stands as a crowning achievement, affirming her rightful place among the most revered figures in country music. Her official induction ceremony alongside fellow inductees John Shepard and Bobby Braddock was a poignant celebration of her enduring legacy. From her unforgettable debut at the Grand Ole Opry to her groundbreaking achievements across multiply award platforms, Reba McEntire's legacy is one definite by unparalleled talent, unwavering dedication, and enduring influence, charitable endeavors. Reba McIntyre isn't just a country music legend, she's also a symbol of hope and compassion for those facing hardship. Her philanthropic efforts aren't just a duty. They're deeply rooted in her character, showcasing her unwavering empathy and drive to make a positive impact in the world. One of McIntyre's earliest charitable ventures was the establishment of Reba's Ranch House near Denison, Texas, back in 1992. This act of kindness illustrated her commitment to supporting and comforting those in need. Reba's Ranch House provides refuge and solace to families of patients undergoing medical treatment at nearby hospitals. This remarkable initiative has been a lifeline for countless families grappling with the emotional and financial strains of medical emergencies. McIntyre's inspiration for the Ranch House stemmed from her own observations of the challenges faced by families seeking medical care for their loved ones. Her efforts to ease their burdens offer a home away from home, and extend a helping hand during their darkest times, underscore her genuine dedication to philanthropy. Throughout her illustrious career, McIntyre has consistently demonstrated her dedication to charitable causes. She has been a steadfast supporter of various organizations 
each reflecting her core values and beliefs. Among the many groups that have benefited from her ongoing support is Habitat for Humanity, a nonprofit devoted to providing affordable housing for those in need. McIntyre's involvement with Habitat for Humanity underscores her belief in the importance of shelter and the fundamental human right to a safe and secure home. Reba McIntyre's philanthropic efforts extend to renowned organizations like the Salvation Army, recognized for its disaster relief, community support, and aid to the less fortunate. Her donations have supported various programs and initiatives, offering assistance to individuals and families during challenging times. Additionally, McIntyre has generously contributed to the American Red Cross, an organization synonymous with humanitarian aid and disaster relief. Her support has played a crucial role in enabling the American Red Cross to save lives, provide relief in times of crisis, and assist those in need. Furthermore, McIntyre has shown her commitment to addressing food insecurity and hunger by supporting Feeding America, the nation's largest hunger relief organization. Her dedication to improving the lives of vulnerable communities is evident through her contributions to initiatives aimed at alleviating hunger and ensuring access to food for those in need. What lies ahead? With a career spanning decades and a talent that has stood the test of time, Reba McIntyre continues to enchant audiences with her music and storytelling. As she looks forward to the future, endless possibilities await this iconic artist. In an exciting development, Reba is poised to make a return to the small screen as a coach on the upcoming season 25 of The Voice, slated to air in 2024. This season will feature a star-studded lineup of coaches with a twist, five legendary stars, including Reba herself, will take on coaching roles. Reba's comeback to The Voice promises to infuse the coaching panel with her distinctive knowledge, experience, and musical expertise, providing invaluable guidance to aspiring artists. In addition to her role on The Voice, Reba has garnered attention with her recent appearance in the hit spin-off series Young Sheldon, underscoring her enduring influence in the entertainment industry. Speculation swirls regarding the possibility of her recurring role in the show, further solidifying her stature in the world of television. Despite her numerous achievements, one thing remains clear. Reba McIntyre shows no signs of slowing down.